Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus. This is Digital Disciple Ministries with a word to the world. If you've been paying attention to recent news articles, media coverage, then you would have gotten a glimpse of the Corona virus. You would have heard about this pandemic that is going on in China with recent cases now uh, reported in the United States and wondering what is going on. The coronavirus, is this something that the Bible prophesies? Is this something that fulfills Bible prophecies concerning the last days or the end times that we are living in? Certainly, there are a lot of things that would elude to that. But what does the Bible have to say about things like this? What does this mean for believers? Jesus gave a very clear warning in Matthew chapter 24. Let's look at verses 3 through 8. And the Bible says this concerning the last days and some of the things that we ought to expect as being a part of the end time generation. That's you and I. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? The context of this chapter is about the end of the world the end of this age as we know it. And it's also about the coming of the Lord, when the Lord Jesus should return to the earth. The disciples are asking, tell us about the times and what, we, what, sh what should we expect during these times that the world is going to end when you are coming to the earth again. And Jesus goes on to tell them this. Verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And Jesus goes on to lay out a detailed discourse further describing the events surrounding the end of the world and his coming, his return. The very first thing that the Messiah says is take heed not to be deceived. So along with that list of things that we need to be careful about, things that we're going to hear about includes famines, and pestilences. What is a pestilence? The Greek word for pestilence is loimos, and it means pestilence. Merriam-Webster defines pestilence as a contagious or infectious epidemic disease that is virulent and devastating, something that is destructive or pernicious. This coronavirus appears to fit the description of a pestilence. Here is what the CDC has to say about this. This is straight from the CDC. The coronaviruses are common throughout the world. So this is not something that's just boom out of the blue. We've never heard of this. The CDC is saying that coronaviruses are common throughout the world. We've seen them before. Here are a few types that you may have been uh, familiarized with over the past several years and whatnot. Uh, coronavirus MERS, which stands for Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. There's also SARS. 
is a type of coronavirus that stands for sudden acute respiratory syndrome. Now, concerning this epidemic in China, this is what the CDC, uh, this is what, excuse me, this is what the New York Times has to say. 80 reported deaths in China as of right now, up until the point of the making of this video, 3,000 cases. Now, I am speculating. I have no idea if these sources are correct. People are talking about government conspiracies. People are talking about government plots. This virus was made in a lab many, many years ago, and it was a fluke to get people to buy into it so that they can create a vaccine and cure it. Others are saying that this was a man-made thing for population control. So there are people that believe that this is a conspiracy and there are people that believe that this is perhaps just a happenstance, something that just, oh no, this happened. With what we've seen in China here, this is a new strand of the coronavirus. It's a new strand. This is not something that's seen before. Now, the CDC uh, says that these coronaviruses, these strands have been known to evolve and mutate. It's not far-fetched to believe that if they can mutate on their own, with a little human assistance, they could be manipulated, even engineered and designed to become more lethal and to become deadly and to become more of a danger to society. If there was a plot to reduce the population and there is sufficient evidence showing that there are an elite circle of people whose interest is population control, look up the New World Order and some of its rules and regulations and some of its ideologies, and you will see that population control is indeed something that is being promoted, talked about, and invested in. But the point of this video isn't to explore the validity of these conspiracies. Whether it's a conspiracy or not, I'm not here to discuss that. The point is that this is an event that is going on in the world right now. Even as of today, there are five reported cases in the United States, states including Illinois and California, and then I think a couple of more. So what does all of this mean to a believer? What does all of this mean to someone that puts their trust in Jesus, someone that puts their trust in Christ? What do we do? Should we worry about things like that? Should we be concerned about things like that? Well, what if an outbreak is happening near where I live? Or what if I have relatives that are in danger of being exposed to this? The first thing that I want to point out is that Jesus said that this was going to happen. He said that there, he said, you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. There will be famines and pestilences. Now, it doesn't matter if it's man-made and it doesn't matter if it's natural. The fact is that this is a pestilence and it's here. Prophecy can be fulfilled by human beings being the agent of fulfillment. For example, it was prophesied in that same chapter of Matthew 24 that the temple was going to be destroyed. And it was in 70 AD when the Romans besieged Jerusalem, they destroyed the temple. Prophecy was executed at the hands of human beings. So whether or not the coronavirus was manufactured in a government lab somewhere with an evil plot to destroy people or to cause pandemic and chaos is really irrelevant. How it's being fulfilled. The fact is that this is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. This is a pestilence or at least the threat thereof. For all we know, we could be lied to about the whole thing and this could be used as a fear tactic of some kind which we know that the enemy's favorite trick is to use fear. And the Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love and power and that of a sound mind. So whether this threat is true or legit or not, 
is really irrelevant. What matters is the believer's heart and response to seeing things like this. And according to Jesus, we shouldn't be surprised if we see more things like this in the news. We shouldn't be surprised if things get worse because he said that these things would happen. What should we do? Well, if you are a child of God and you belong to Jesus, you don't have anything to worry about. Because if you die, then you die in the Lord. If you don't die, then you live. It's simple as that. If you have a purpose and you're not done with your job on earth, nothing can kill you. However, if your job is completed and your assignment is finished and you die, well then, well done is what I hope that you hear. So the best thing that you can do is find out if you don't already know what is it that I was created to do, what is my purpose, what is my assignment in the kingdom of God, and let me get busy about doing my father's business. Could it be the difference between people that will be alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord and those that perish in great tribulation? Could the difference be that one group knows who they are and they are busy about God's business working in the kingdom and the other group doesn't know who they are? And they are fearful and unbelieving. There are always rules to the exception. So this may not apply to everybody. But it's a thought at how much importance is placed on what you do or what you don't do. Consider the army that Gideon raised up under God's command. Gideon raised up an army that was mighty. And God said, listen, this is too much. These are too many people. Send home Everybody that's afraid, that doesn't want to fight. And that greatly reduced the army. Could it be that if you are fearful and unbelieving and you're not willing to operate in your purpose, that you're going to get sent home in these last days? Not sent to your physical address, but sent home to be with the Father, to die as a martyr, because on earth, you're not fulfilling your purpose. Could it be that those that will survive are the ones that are busy working in the kingdom? It's possible. But again, there are exceptions to the rule. You might not be doing Jack Diddley squat and stand to see the coming of the Lord and not see death at all, but be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And yet you might be busy about your father's business and die as a martyr anyways. Whatever it is that the Lord has in store for you, let that be. And so let it happen. As far as this coronavirus epidemic that seems to be threatening people in the world, that appears to be a looming pending doom, don't worry about that. And don't fear. Why? Listen to this beautiful Bible passage found in Psalms chapter 91. And pray this over yourself and over your family. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth, shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness." nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, 
because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. This is a promise from the word of God that brings comfort concerning any of the prophecies that have to do with this end time generation. If you don't know who Jesus is and you just happen to watch this to the end, there's a couple of videos that I'd like for you to watch that can help you to be prepared for whatever happens. Even if you live to see the events described by the Bible that will happen in these last days, or if you should depart suddenly without notice. It's good to know where you stand and where your eternity is going to be spent. And you can know that for certain. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He goes on to say in John chapter 3, verse 5, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whether in this life or in the next life, let our aim be to spend all eternity with the one that died for us in the kingdom of heaven. In the description, I'm going to post a link about another video that I did concerning this end time war that details about being afraid and being left to suffer. Check that out. I'll also include in the descriptions how you can obey the gospel and secure your salvation by obeying the word of God that he left with his disciples. You must believe that Jesus is the savior, but that faith warrants obedience and that obedience is demonstrated by taking action following the instructions that we find in the scriptures take heed that ye be not deceived may the lord bless you and keep you and may the wind of the spirit of god be at your back and the face of our god be ever before you as we traverse these end times let us be soldiers busy about our Father's business. Peace be with you.